People who write related rates problems, they really like shadows. And they really like the shadows of light poles. And usually somebody's walking toward the light pole or walking away from the light pole. Something like that's going on. Anytime you see a light pole and a shadow being cast across, you know, somebody's head or something, this is always going to involve similar triangles for your step two, where you find an equation that relates the variables. There's always going to be similar triangles in there because see the similar triangles? Yeah, that's what you got to look for. Okay. Now in this case, we are, um, the lamp pole is 50 feet high. We're dropping a ball from the same height but 30 feet away from the light as shown below. Okay, so it's from the same height. Okay, how fast is the ball's shadow moving along the ground a half second later? So that's uh, some of the information given. And the ball falls a distance s equals 16 t squared in t seconds. So you physics people know that that's one half a t squared where a is the acceleration of gravity. Normally we would uh, have, since the ball is falling down, we use negative 16 for gravity, but their s here refers to this distance here and and not the at the y coordinate it refers to the distance so that's why their s is positive and and we'll work with that okay so how are we going to work with that um so first of all let's put the ball in this picture the ball starts from the same height as the lamp post so it is also at a height of 50 at t equals zero all right, but then it's going to fall this distance s, that s is equal to 16t squared. So, so far, all we're doing is really collecting our given information. For example, we want it at t equals 1 half. And, and part of that is just drawing a picture and putting some variables on the picture. So what additional variables we, do we need? We have x, which is the length of the, the total length from here to the pole. All right, and then our dx dt, the question was how fast is the shadow moving? dx dt, so that's our question. How fast is the shadow moving? We can make a prediction since x is moving, since the, yeah, x is moving toward the origin of our system, x is decreasing, so dx dt should come out to be a negative number. All right, what else can we put on here? Um, so then I think now it's really just time to look at the, the, um, triangles, the, the um, similar triangles. So we've got this triangle that is similar to this triangle. So what we need, we've already got variables on the base here. I guess we need the, a variable, the, the base of the big triangle is x. We need to, to represent the base of, or let's say the long leg of the smaller triangle. So I could just call that a different variable, but I know something about this distance in here. It's related to the x. In fact, it's uh, x minus 30. All right, because this is x, we're taking 30 out of it, so this distance is x minus 30. Okay, what can I do with this height here? Well, for now, let's just call it, um, let's give it another variable name, y. Now I've got 50, I've got 30, I've got x minus 30, y. I could start setting up a proportion. But before I do this, I might re realize how the y is related to the s. Because, right, I'm, I know, I'm going to be able to find ds dt, and the variables that I need to relate here are s and x. So how is y related to t? That's what I need to look at. So if y is 50 minus s, right? There's the total distance is 50. And uh, if I subtract s from 50, I'm going to get y. And s is 16t squared. So y is 50, 50 minus 16t squared. All right. Now I've got enough information to write a proportion using just two variables, x and t. So since I know um, the rate at which things are falling up, they're, they're actually probably, as I think about it, more than one way to set up this problem, I'm sure. But I did it like this, and so let's start with the, you know, the basic fundamental proportion here is that y over x minus 30, right, this side over this side, y over x minus 30 is equal to this side over this side, which is 50 over x, 50 over x. Okay, so now since I know y is 50 minus 16t squared, I know that 50 minus 16t squared over x minus 30 is equal to 50 over x. Now I've got an equation that relates x and t, so I ought to be able to get dx dt pretty easily. 
Now, what I don't want to do is do a derivative that has a bunch of quotients in it. So uh, let me see if I can simplify this equation. I could do the derivative right now, but it would be a mess because I'd have to use quotient rule, and I mean, over here I wouldn't have to. But let's see what we can simplify. What if I just multiply both sides by x minus 30? Then 50 minus 16t squared equals 50 over x times x minus 30. And then, see, I can distribute the x, and one of them is going to cancel, so that makes it a little bit easier. 50 minus 16t squared equals 50 minus... 1500 over x. So, you know, a lot of you guys I noticed in the project tend to um, do your derivatives like you would do this derivative with a product rule and a quotient rule, you know. Think about how can you simplify it first and then do the derivative. Think, simplify things as much as you can before you do the derivative. Distribute things that distribute, you know. Multiply over things that would simplify it. All right, so I'm just gonna do one more rewrite on this so that we can you know, deal with the x. A lot of you guys could probably do that bit in your head, but I'm gonna write it out and be explicit that to do this derivative, I wanna write the over x as an x to the negative one. And I think I've made this as nice as I can for doing the derivative, so I'm ready to do my derivative. I don't have to write that I'm doing ddt here, but it's nice for someone who's trying to follow my work. Now, here's a funny thing. Uh, I'm going to do the derivative of negative 16 t squared. We're doing with respect to t, and it is t. So am I going to do uh, negative 32 dt dt? I could, but for several reasons, dt dt is 1. Or another way to say that is I'm not taking the derivative of one variable with respect to a different variable. These variables match. So there doesn't have to be a dt dt. But if, they, if you did, it would be 1, and it wouldn't change anything. All right, ddt over here, the 50 goes away, and now I have a negative 1500 x to the negative 2 power. dx dt. Because this time, right, on this side, it's a variable x with respect to t. So that means that I'm doing a derivative of a certain variable with respect to a different variable. That's when we pick up the dx dt. All right, so that's not so bad. And now um, I'm ready to start plugging in values. I know the t equals 1 half, so I can put that there, negative 32 times 1 half, and it equals um, negative 1,500 times, oh, I don't know what the x is. What am I going to do? All right, so let's figure out what the x is at t equals 1 half. All right, so at t equals 1 half. I can use any of these equations to solve for what x is. Um, I just chose this one, I thought that would be sort of easiest. Um, so 50 minus 16 t squared equals 50 minus 1500 over x. And I'll just plug in the t equals 1 half. So uh, if t equals 1 half, t squared is 1 fourth, so the 16 t squared becomes 4 uh, equals 50 minus 1500 over x, right? So 46 equals 50 minus 1500 over x. I don't know how much of this I really have to write out. So you're going to have 1500x, um, 1500, 1500 over x equals 4, right? Um, a nice technique that not everybody's familiar with is when I have x in the denominator like this equals a constant, I'm going to switch the x and the 4. x equals 1500 over 4, so x equals 375. Now I can plug that in for my x over here. So 375 to the negative 2 power, dx dt, and now I simply solve that for dx dt, which you can do. Um, I did I did want to take advantage to show you some sort of mental math techniques. You look at this and like, where's the mental math technique? But there is one, all right? There's actually significant ones. So here, let's, let's solve this without a calculator. You could, of course, put in your calculator to solve it, but let's solve it without a calculator, just to show you the cool um, techniques that are in here. Because if I notice that how did I how did I get this 375 in the first place? I did 1500 divided by 4. So this 1500 is related to the 375. In fact, I can cancel it, right? So if I think of the 1500 as being 4 times 375, and then I'm multiplying that times 375 to the negative 2 power, right, then I can cancel one of my 375s. And so what I really have now is negative 16. In fact, is I missing a negative somewhere? Okay, when I did this derivative, the negative one power times the negative one makes this positive 1500x to the negative two. How many people caught that? Did you catch that? And now, how did I catch it after having made that mistake? Because remember I said I need the dx dt to be negative? 
if these were both negative, then I wouldn't have a negative. So that I like those are the kind of things you got to check your work as you go. Is my equation making sense? My equation was not making sense right here. So I went back and said, oh, negative times negative is positive. So we got to fix those. Okay. Now back to our mental math techniques. So the, the mental math technique that I was lacking is negative times negative is positive. Okay. So cancel one of the 375s. Now I have negative 16 equals 4 over 375 dx dt. And now look how cool. So when I divide both sides by 375, or I take this fraction and flip it over, right? So that means the 16 is going to cancel with a 4. So now I'm going to have negative 4 times 375 equals dx dt. And then I already knew what 4 times 375 was, so I had that here. By the way, how did I know 1500 divided by 4 was 375? Did I use a calculator? No, I said half of 1500 is 750 and half of that is 375. I didn't use a calculator for any of this. I'm not saying that to show off. I'm saying that to say there are mental math techniques that will make you faster than a calculator and also enable you to solve problems without a calculator. So I get my dx dt equals negative 1500. So there are a couple of things uh, in terms of the numbers that are surprising here. Like the, the x equals 375 when I first got that, I was sort of hesitated. Be like, how is the x equal to 375? But it actually makes sense if you sort of diagram out what's going on here with this uh, picture. So we're here 30 feet out, but we've only gone 4 feet down. So if you take t equals 1 half and put it in here, you get s equals 4 at t equals 1 half. So this height is 46 feet, this height is 50 feet, and this is 30 feet. So this is 46, this is 30, this is 50. Now it starts to make sense that this could be 375 because you haven't gone down very far, so this angle is very shallow. Then also, this ridiculously high number of negative 1,500 feet per second starts to make sense because the this angle is so shallow that by the ball dropping a little bit, the that shadow is going to move very, very fast, all right? So that negative 1,500 feet per second looks suspicious, but if you really examine what's going on in the problem, it's actually quite reasonable. All right, so there you go. There's that one, and um, that's all the examples I'm going to do for you. Everything else is up to you, and you can schedule me for flex if you need help with the homework, which I will remind you is page 251. Look, I only give you six problems. Wasn't that nice? Because they take a while to do. Okay.